Instagram Legends of Our Time on GBC24. My name is Gifty Echi. Today we are coming to you from the studio of the Art Gallery of one of the greatest artists this country has ever produced. Our Legend for tonight has exhibited widely, building an international reputation spanning several decades. Here in Africa, he has become a huge authority on the West African seas. My guest for today is Professor Abladi Glava. Hello, Prof. Hi. Thank you for having us. Pleasure. Pleasure meeting you. Uh, don't worry, don't bother. <laughs> don't bother. <laughs> it's all chocolate. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this is your workshop. This is my studio. Oh, this is your yes, studio. Yes, it's workshop. Where everything begins. Mm -hmm. I come here mm -hmm. when I'm fed up with the paperwork. Mm -hmm. And I sit down okay. and I imagine. I have assignment. This I'm working now towards an exhibition in November. Okay. So when I'm fed up with the paperwork, I come here to put my ideas yes. on, on canvas. Okay, so you first uh, draw. First you draw. Um what you imagine. Depending upon the subject, yes. What I imagine the market to be. Okay. I put it with charcoal on the canvas and try to compose. You no, know, you've got to balancing when the composition means balancing mm. uh, the figures and things mm. tell and us about you or what you are drawing now what you what have I'm in mind what now. i have in mind mm. is a very very busy market okay with people passing others buying others mm. selling the, the chaotic nature of the market uh, of but, the market the but these key individuals are dominated they are dominated two of women course. yes of course when you go to the market you see somebody standing in front of you mm. there's somebody okay there's somebody. so the whole thing is a whole a crowd of things okay and there are some in the foreground mm. there are some in the middle ground mm. and there are some very far away in the background you don't okay. even see them anymore okay. so that is what you work out with now this women one two three are supposed to be the foremost people, people in, in the form. When you look at the That picture. you see. And then you see these two as the dominant. The key but that's, that's the key. Mm. First, I draw them first mm. as the key figures. And then I draw the other things around them. Mm. You know, so. This is obviously a, a yeah. trader. Yes, another figure. Mm. Th this figure and this figure may be mm. on the same mm. ground mm. or that kind of. So, yes. So from I, here, what will you do? From here, when I'm satisfied with the composition, okay. then I'll take the courage to begin to paint. And of course, I have all my colors here, and my palette is there. And Which I one take is the palette? Oh. The palette, yes, this one. exactly. That's ah, the palette knife. This is the magic one. That's the knife. That's the knife. The, palette <laughs> the magic knife. one. Yes, the magic one. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I... I I take the palette knife mm. and then begin to squeeze the colors and mix. Okay. But now that I try to do it when I feel like it. When you feel like it. When, when really I feel like it. Because immediately this composition, immediately you start painting, it means you are there.
<laughs> you don't see them. You know, I, I, I sort of imagine <clears throat> a, a big street. People are, <clears throat> people are I celebrating. I want the blue thing. You know, yeah, there's that blue line here. 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 From here from, yes, exactly, yes. the sky. The, ah. The, when you come, the, the, the people are here. Okay. Uh, the tree, what do you call it? The, the buildings are here. Okay. And then, well, these are people. people. Oh. Yes, come back. <laughs> when you are sitting in Sandy, don't you see people like they are merging there? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. From, yeah. From, from yeah. here to there, yeah. and from here to there. Yeah. You see, it's like going. People are going That's there. True. And they are holding also the colors. They are weaving, they are dancing. They are, mm. it's, it's like it's a carnival. It's busy. It's, it's busy, it's yes. Busy. That's, that's the business I want to capture. Mm -hmm. So, yes. You don't even see the building. Just see it. It's mm. all mixed up. Mm. Yes. Mm. That mm. is the. Yeah. And this one, that's a woman. Yes. Two women, the, I can those see. Those two, those two um, paintings mm. were commissioned. Okay. It's also unfortunate. It was commissioned by somebody mm. who came to see me, wanted these women figures. Okay. And by the time I finished, he, he died. Oh. So I, 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 I couldn't go to the family to say, hey, that, that's why I want to keep the paintings. Oh. Okay. But yes. Um, and this I one? Like oh, that's again the people. You see, that's, um, I could have carried this on to there. Okay. I could have carried this on. So it means one. this this actually this canvas needs some feather painting on it. Okay. But it looks clumsy. But I like you it. want to add on. It looks clumsy already. It looks clumsy already. <laughs> yes. Well, one can kill the colours. Mm. One can kill the colours and make it somber. Or highlight the colours and mm. make it more bright. Okay. That, that's fine. That's another yes, yellow another, tree. Another uh, tree. Yellow tree. Another yellow yellow forest, yes. Okay. And that's like the people yeah, here. Yeah, this close to this one. Here. And then and another okay. figure. Okay. Another of the office of the market figures. Okay. Um, and that kind of I like that kind of profile. Mm. Uh, Madam profile. Uh, this uh, okay. the, the stance they take. Uh, okay. they, they walk about and, okay. uh, with with uh, courage. That's fine. Yes. That's not part of your. No, yes, it's, uh, we're, it's not part of my work. It's uh, J.C. Sapon, okay. who lives abroad. So this kind of painting, yes. are you the only one into this kind of painting in Ghana here? Uh, possibly, yes. Possibly the only one using, one using the palette knife. And uh, most people are not too comfortable with the palette knife. But I am, so... Why is it so? Why are they not uh, comfortable with yes. it? One has to introduce it to the students when they are growing up. It, it, it's got to, it has its own peculiar uh, circumstances of that nature. Mm. And one needs to learn to use it, be versatile with it. Mm. Uh, if you are the nice, slow person, you need a brush. Mm. If you are the, the one who boom, 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 you need the palette knife. Wow. Yes. wow. And then finally, there's yes, one. Exactly. We have some lines yes. running no, through. No, it's uh, lines with, in, in, on the buildings. You know, buildings join together, they are together or they are not together. It's, you're creating an impression. So this is just uh, an African setting? Yes. This this is when you are walking down the Makola thing. <laughs> <laughs> when you know, that road, Makola road, before you get to uh, Kintakita, you are place. Okay. Eh? okay. No, this is all around us. Tema we station don't. coming towards. Exactly, exactly. Okay. It's all around us. Sometimes we, we are unaware of the things around us. We don't look. We have all our eyes closed. Um, the artist must learn to look mm. and present to you the things around you. So why do you, do you always ask me to come back, go, Be, it, go yes, back before you can that, appreciate what you've done? Because that is how I work it. You see, when I, pick, I, I stand there and I come to it, I put a color there. Mm. And I go to look whether what I've done is correct or it falls within my scheme of things. Otherwise, I, apply, I wipe it out. Now, I, somehow, I like the business here. Mm, yeah. I like the business here. I, love, this, I this, also love the red colors. Yeah, exactly. It brings yeah. out it, the It's like spices in a yeah, soup, concept. you know? It's like pepper. When you cook the soup, you put pepper in it and then make it sharp. So yes, uh, this is the thing that uh, and another market, another market. I love the markets. You love the markets. How often do you go to the markets?
acquired? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that question. It came gradually. Um, it came gradually. I, when I was in school here in La, mm. I, I, it never occurred to me that one day I would be an artist. Indeed, to, to th talk of an artist is unknown. It's, mm. it's, it's not a thing that is cherished within the community. So yes, um, I saw a bit of it as I was going to school and I was doing some small, small drawings okay. uh, for particular girls who wanted to knit, do some knitting. You know, that. That's right. <laughs> so they came to me and you, uh, I did a few of that. Mm. But uh, I wanted to be, uh, as a child, uh, mm. those days the people in society were like Dr. Dankwa, Dr. Way Bannerman, Dr. This, uh, Engineer This. So we all dreamed like that. I dreamt like that, but one day I would want to be either a medical doctor or an engineer or something like that not um, an artist but um, gradually going to school emerged by the time i finished teacher training uh, i knew i would be an art teacher or an artist so that's in, for sure in, in, in this case it was something that you developed it on it your developed own. yes along the line okay. along the line along developmental avenues um, it came up okay. and uh, i i I was glad to be part of. I, I, went, I trained as a teacher, mm. and I, I, when I came out, I didn't like teaching at all. Mm. I went to a classroom, mm. and you have 45 eyes looking at you, <laughs> 45 pupils, mm -hmm. uh, which is about 90 eyes eh, looking at you. I didn't quite enjoy that. <laughs> so I wanted to teach something that really I wouldn't shame. stand there for people to look at me. Mm. And uh, in training, my teachers encouraged me that I have the flair for art. So I went to train as an art teacher at Tech. Okay, we'll, we'll come there. Yes. But do you know the interesting thing? A lot of people think art is not too much of a serious profession. But given the opportunity, you know, a lot of us, we can't even paint. But people think it's, it's not too serious a, a profession um, or it's for, you know. Yeah, because there are all sorts of, <laughs> I wouldn't use the word. Um, <laughs> there are all sorts of characters in it. <laughs> Uh, you know, if you, you are dressed some kind of dress that people see you like a crazy man, you must behave like uh, you are a bit crazy, then you are an artist. <laughs> but I'm not a bit crazy, I'm all right there. Okay. So, uh, yes, um, yeah, we, we don't look seriously at, at artists. Mm. Artists are not supposed or thought of as serious people. people. Yes. I'm sorry, that is, that is the perception. Yes. But, but does are, it pay? Well, that that, does it pay? Wow, <laughs> that's a huge question. <laughs> I think since we came here, since we, I opened this gallery, I can, uh, I can say that yes, uh, artists that were working and doing art part-time, mm. today are leaving the work they were doing and doing full-time full -time. studio, which tells you that they are finding it more profitable, more right. useful uh, doing their own work and earning their own living. We're not waiting at the end of the month to be paid, but you pay yourself. And I'm known, I know people now who we started with, when we started at Noah, yeah. that have built their own houses. Out of yeah. this job. Now, if you tell me that is not pay, <laughs> then uh, that, that's real getting income, real income. So, so which one would you say was your most expensive project ever? Project? How, yeah, and how much was it? Painting, a particular painting. A, a painting? Yes. Oh, oh, a painting. Now, uh, here, I'm give, my paintings are like giveaways. I give paintings away. When you away. say giveaways, what Giveaways are prices like now, if you, I would say in Ghana, my highest pricing is 48,000, which is about 12,000 US dollars. Now, that is a giveaway. Uh, my, now, that kind of painting will sell about some 50,000 pounds. I sell usually through the oh. UK. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, tell, I keep that kind of money there. When I need something, I, I take it and I carry my card here. Yeah. So, yes, um, here it's a giveaway. Yeah. Um, people travel the way to Ghana to come and buy a painting here because yeah. it's that cheap here. Yes. And, and how long does it take you to come up with a, a particular piece, like what we have here? To finish your work, yeah, to fin a canvas. To finish, yes. Mm. I paint, I go to the canvas about three or four times. Mm. And I spend 
I eat them about three hours, four hours. So a canvas may take something like 12 to 15, 16 hours. But it's not continuous. This morning I was in the studio. I got mm -hmm. up in the morning, I went to the studio. I continued with the canvas, which is a bit dry, so I can mm -hmm. work on it. Mm -hmm. um, that is how my work develops. So I have about two or three canvases going at the same time. Um, and when it's dry enough to be worked on, then I attach it and work on, on it. So I don't start a painting to finish it. No, okay. it, it doesn't okay. go that way. Okay, that's fine. Yes. You know, when I look at your paintings, mm -hmm. I can give you three characteristics. Mm -hmm. One, the fact that you love to paint in bright colors. Yes. And uh, your paintings are very busy, if you, sh you should ask me. You know, it's clumsy. Oh yeah, it's clumsy, yeah. that is uh, yes. the order in this, the disorderliness. Uh, uh, some kind of um, unplanned, mm. uh, chaotic. Mm. That, that's precisely what, what I try to capture. That's what's precisely what I try to capture on the canvas. That uh, you are confronted with a situation that is not, or doesn't seem orderly. But there is an order. Um, I try to capture the order, the tempo, the movement. When colors are moving, there is not at one place. So you, you, your eyes must be going like that, as you would see in normal circumstances when you stand in the market, for example, or when you go to a lorry station. Oh, in the normal circumstances, as you move about, colors are dancing around us all the time. Mm. But uh, we fail to see. We are too busy chasing money. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yes. And, the, and the lastly, I love your captions. Oh. You know my favorite of all time? Um, there's this one. What's the name? Um, By All Means. By All Means, I see. Yes. That's one of, that must be one of my, possibly one of my uh, lorry stations, I think. Um, I was painting, there was a time I was painting lorry stations, uh, and, and I, I write all the... Um, uh, God forgive and uh, <laughs> that kind of thing. So those are the captions on the back of some of our vehicles. Some of our vehicles, yes, wow. because I was painting the vehicles. And so when I finish the painting, the painting, normally is a painting, the painting that suggests the title. The title of the work. And uh, you, you, you get something comes with you. Yeah, I love this. Mm. Uh, it's like can, a carnival, for example. And you also love to paint on women. Oh, yes, I, uh, uh, yes, I do, I do paint a lot of women, maybe. I am influenced by women, I think. I'm influenced by women. Uh, my whole life has been uh, cornered by women. <laughs> my mother is number one, women in my life, my daughters. My, I'm surrounded by women. And I think they are more beautiful than men. That's, uh, I made that mistake in Abidjan when somebody was interviewing me and uh, she, she asked her question, why do you paint women? And I didn't think of it. And I said, oh, they are more beautiful than men. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have said that. No, but you're right, it's true. I mean, I shouldn't that, have it's said a that. fact. No, but you, say, you don't say that publicly. <laughs> yes. So yes, I paint women, but they, they, they influence our culture. I think, really, seriously, yeah. women are the most influential. They are more influential than men. Why do you say as so? As far as the culture is concerned, they control the culture. We, men refuse to accept that fact. Mm -hmm. but, are you uh, a feminist? Oh, no, I'm not, uh, I'm not a feminist. I'm not nothing this. But <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you, I, watching the culture in our way of life, in our home, mm -hmm. in our entertainment, dancing, in the economy, on the market, they control us completely. But um, they are quiet over it. So men accept it as if they are the, uh, they, they take as if they are the boss. They're not no boss in, in this matter. I know that my mother uh, controlled our lifestyle. She, she really made us. My father was there. She was behaving like a man, you know? <laughs> but uh, listen, I remember that woman, I carry her name all over the place. Wherever I go, at where I live, I bought a street called Omanye Street, Omanye Avenue. Mm. I built this thing and called it Omanye House. I know the woman was amazing. She was amazing. Um, and some women along the line um, I met that have helped. Mrs. Du Bois, for example, mm -hmm. uh, Shelley Du Bois uh, took me to see Kwame Nkrumah, the, uh, the, the Sajifo. That's how I got scholarship to return to Britain. You know, 
Uh, people they are very influential. Very influential. And people, strategic. Strategic, yeah. They are strategic. They can turn things around. So <laughs> <laughs> you better believe it. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. You know, let's go back to your choice of color, your color themes. Yes. They are, they are very bright. Yes. Why that choice? Oh, I can look look at the atmosphere. Look at the environment. Mm. Look at, it's amazing. And people have noticed that I have actually changed to color. Before, I was painting mm. in somber colors, quiet colors. Uh, I couldn't paint direct from the tube. When you squeeze the color, I, I couldn't stand using it direct on the canvas. Mm. Uh, I think because of my training from the English background, mm. I lived a lot in Britain. I stayed for almost five years in Britain. And I think that influenced me looking at color. But uh, in time, I have gone the other way around and I'm now people are now complaining that hey why is all red and yet why is all bright? <laughs> all bright. All bright Light colors. Blue. But I think it's the environment. Living in this kind of environment, you mm. can't paint browns and greys. Mm. You need to paint yellows and blues and mm. the, all the, the primary colours. And they've got to show. And I think that I'm only responding to the environment. Wow. Yes. Tell us a bit about your style of painting. Yes. Mm, tell us, tell us um, about it. I wouldn't use the word style. My method, I would say, I use the palette knife. Again, when I started as a young artist, mm. very young, uh, in that training, I met an art teacher in a school where I had gone to t do teaching practice in Britain. And he watched me painting, and he said, ah, the way you paint, you could do better with a palette knife. And at the time, I hadn't tried it I, before. I hadn't tried the palette knife before. I knew the palette knife used it to mix the color. You don't paint with it. But I, I took the challenge, and I realized that, yeah, that is the way I want to paint. Uh, one, it registers your, um, it registers your emotions uh, immediately. What you want to say, you say it. It's like making a statement. Painting yeah, straight to the point. Straight to the point. And if you don't like it, you take it away. Uh, the brush doesn't do that. The brush, you've got to be, uh, like somebody speaking, uh, uh, you see, uh, uh. <laughs> but the knife, point, point, point. And you take it off and you put it on and you take, you go back and look at it and put it. So is that spontaneity, which is what I, I, the feeling I get. And when you are painting a crowd, and the crowd is moving. Mm -hmm. You can't afford to be mixing colors and like To be now deciding. No, 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 no. You take it, boom, 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 and put it there. And then, if it's good, it's good. You stand back and look at it, oh, yeah, it's good. If it's not good, you go there and take it off. So, yes, the knife, the mm -hmm. palette knife, that's the, the, the method I use. And, and, and I, it, it suits me fine. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy doing it. You know what, Prof, we have to take a quick break and uh, when we yeah. come back, we'll yeah. continue with our conversation. Very good. Very good. <laughs> anyway, and uh, we're still watching Legends of Our Time on GBC 24. On Legends of Our Time, uh, we speak to people who are impacting our society positively. So we'll take a quick break and when we come back, we'll continue with Professor Abladi Glava. <music> Off. Yes. Thank, thank you again for having yeah. us. It's good to it, have you. Thank you. So let's look at some of your achievements. Achievements? Yes, some of the oh, awards. I know you've been given the Order of the Voter. <laughs> oh, by well, the state what does that all mean? <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at some of the I've, awards I've, um, you've, you've seen. Yes, received okay, as now. An the, the one that, circumstance that happened to me mm. um, that I consider it an achievement mm. uh, is uh, painting for the O'Hare International Airport in Chicago. When they were years ago, maybe over, over almost 15, 20 years ago, they had finished the airport in Chicago. Mm. And Accra is a sister city to Chicago. 
and they wanted all the sister cities of Chicago to bring artists to Chicago to come and paint there in Chicago uh, and they will pay the artists. Mm. So I was selected for Accra mm. uh, and I went to Chicago to Who meet. Who selected you? Who linked you? Now, it's amazing. <laughs> it's, you know, sometimes good things have happened to me. And I think it same came from a woman who was working for the USIS, who knows my work. Mm. This information came to the US people. I think yeah. it's a US contract. Mm. So they looked around and they thought they could send the me. So I was infor informed and I was selected to go. Mm. We spent uh, how many? Uh, we spent about two weeks in Chicago, eating and drinking, just eating and, and drinking. No, not painting. Okay. Just they took us around all the restaurants, all the big restaurants in Chicago, and we were just eating. Mm. After the two weeks, they took us to studios, big studios, like this space, mm. and they asked, paint your impression of Chicago. Wow. That's huge. That's, that's, that's something. That's a challenge. When we were going about eating, we didn't realize we were going to be <laughs> given that challenge. Uh, challenge. So we did paint, uh, and I painted... Um, something of my impression of Chicago, mm. which was that I thought I wanted to express what I saw in Chicago, that it's supposed to be a melting pot. Chicago is supposed to be, America is supposed to be a melting pot, where people go and get together and then they bind together. But Chicago is not melting. You see the Mexican community, you see the uh, what, Ch Chicano mm. community, you mm. see the African community, it's all communities. Like Tema, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you see, it's amazing. So I, I, I call it the, um, the ethnic tapestry. It's like a tapestry with different colors, different people, all put together. Mm. But they are not melted, they're not joining. Yeah. It's yeah. All. So that's what I painted. And um, after we painted, the, the paint is still hanging in the Chicago International yeah. Airport. People, my friends who know my work, they come to tell me, hey, your work is in Chicago. <laughs> and uh, I, I feel happy about it. For me, it's an achievement. Mm. Uh, I have one at the UNESCO head office in Paris. Uh, uh, when uh, Prince and Princess um, Takamado, they visited Ghana. We were then at uh, Nwa, and they brought him to, uh, uh, the two of them to uh, our gallery. They got painting, my, they bought two of my paintings, which they took to Japan. Mm. Now, the, for me, these are the highlights of yeah. my work. Your career. Uh, career, mm. where people who don't know you, don't know me, have no idea, they see your work and they, they feel they must take this work home. Mm. So at what point did you decide to set up this um, art gallery? Gallery. Um, it, beca it became, um, I have dreamed for an art gallery over the years, but I had often thought that it's government and the nation that should build an art gallery. It never occurred to me that it's I an should. an individual. An individual uh, project. But when 90, I was going to retire from the university in 93. Actually, in 94, I should retire. But I discussed with my wife that mm. I can't, after retirement, I can't stay in Kumase okay. forever, for good. I mean, hey, I must go home. And we thought, okay, if to go home and continue what I'm doing, it means a gallery. Mm. Now, have we the means? We've got to look at our resources. And we realize we can, we can it's another challenge, mm. another 10. Mm. So immediately, in fact, we didn't finish, I, I, I wouldn't wait for the retirement, but we start, I sent my wife down to Accra, Okay. Uh, my brother helped her to get a property in Nungwa. Mm. So while she was building the house here mm. in Nungwa for us, mm. I was in Kumasi continuing my work until I finished. Mm. Uh, so by 93, we had opened the first gallery. The edge simply was to So you have, have two a, galleries? We, clo we, we sold that one. The first we, one? We sold the first one. That's why we could finish this one. And this um, bigger than the yes, first much, one? Yes, this much, much bigger. This is about three, four times that one. Okay. Uh, and um, it, it's, it's good we, we moved because it would have been like a full stop for me. After tech, after university teaching, you come home, uh, smoke, uh, and, uh, <laughs> smoke and drink whiskey and die. But uh, I'm not here. I'm, I won't wait for that. Uh, I, I feel like 
there is still life. Mm. Life must go on mm. until uh, the day comes. Eh? So how would you? How is patronage like? Do people come oh, here this is good. often? To yes, yes, if people come. Oh, at yes. least have a look at what's happening People here. come, and all the international people who visit, they, we are informed by government protocol. They come to tell us that you president from Japan is coming, president from here is coming. And they come here? Oh, sure, wow. sure, yes. The president of Germany recently came, then uh, Netherlands president came, Recently, then the king of Morocco, recently okay. Okay, also came. No, where anybody who enters this, this country has no place for to take vis your visitors. I tell you, that's the truth. We have no place if a visitor is visiting you from abroad. And you, no, this is the only place you. Hey, shame. Hey, 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 shame. <laughs> <laughs> no, but how important is you know art to society? Hey, Why listen. should we you know worry no. ahead? To How should have you? Yes. Okay. Now it's a good town. question. It is a good question. It's a good question. You see, um, you must you must show what you are made of. Mm. Who really are you? Who mm. really am I? Who really am I? Now I could make a lot of money. I can be a for a country can be very very rich mm. and be all that. But who are you? You have something that makes your soul a soul. Huh? Now, what's that? Hey, my <laughs> sister. <laughs> Do you believe you are just sitting there? <laughs> Look, I, no, I think that there is that thing, they give, they're giving it a name, a culture. It's just a name, a term. But I am different from an Englishman who passes. Exactly. Exactly. So what makes him different from me? What is that element that makes him an Englishman and makes me a Ghanaian that we can see a different, not the color, but you see um, a black man born in England become an Englishman, he's come an Englishman. Why is, if you are born here and you are raised here, you are a Ghanaian and you, ha you, are, you have imbibed, you have eaten, not eaten in terms of food, but you have imbibed certain aspects of this culture thing, which has made you you. I don't know. You, do you get what I'm, am I, am I, I describing? <laughs> I, hope, I hope you do, do get it, because there is something <laughs> that you eat, you drink, you imbibe, you, wear. you take in, mm. that Speaking. nobody else has. Nobody else. Mm. And that's what makes you you. And you must show you to the visitor. The visitor sees, uh -huh. now you were asking these colors, why do, you use, why do I use colors and all that? Mm -hmm. It is me in my environment, in my um, space, and I must express it so that other people see who makes me, what, what is a Ghanaian after all? Well, if well, you just joined that, us. We never finish that <laughs> question. We can answer, we can continue. yes, we never finish that debate. <laughs> you are watching Legends of Our Time on GBC 24 and of course GTV. Our guest today is Professor Abladi Glava, and he is an artist. We've spoken extensively, but uh, we'll look at his educational background now. I know you were born in Accra. I was born in Accra. You had your primary education Here at La. La. Yes. Mm, you attended Salem Presley Salem. Boys. Yes. Boarding school. It's a boarding school. At a time. Yes. Were oh, your no, parents no. that rich? Oh no 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 no! In those in those days, <laughs> in those days, it's rather the poor who go to boarding schools. Really? Yeah, yeah sure. No no no. Uh, it's just that uh, mm. the Presbyterians wanted to raise mm. the the people separate from the society. From so wherever they had a boarding school, all over the country, mm. they separated the boys, the children, the young ones, mm. and they had some for girls too. Okay. They separated the young ones from the society. So that by the time you become a man, you, the, the cord, umbilical cord, that attaches you to your society mm -hmm. is broken. This, I'm talking of Christianity. They break your, uh, so that the cultural element around us, which unfortunately has, has a bit of religion in it, is broken so that you become a Christian and a good Christian. Mm -hmm. So the, the president, the, the, the Swiss, when they came, the Basel mission, uh, they created Salems to raise children who will carry on Christianity, not their culture. So you are very, very creepy, if I should. Uh, no, no, no. In those days, they weren't creepy. You are brought up properly. 
<laughs> you don't you don't take money from that is not belonging to you. You're not a staunch you, Christian. No, you don't become a thief. Uh, today, um, <laughs> the, our schools, um, when I was writing my thesis for my PhD, I, I touched on it, that our schools raise people who are becoming the people we see, thieves. Thieves, right from the, from, right from the beginning, they cheat, in, they cheat in the exams, don't they? They do. Exactly. Now, when you are raised in the Presbyterian school, that kind of thing is abominable. When you were raised in prison school, to cheat in the exam, hey, yeah, forgive me. <laughs> well, tell us more. Tell us more no, about the Gold Coast. No, era. Presbyterian, that's what they call. Now, um, somebody wrote a testimonial about me and wrote that um, um, he's, he's a good Presbyterian upbringing. If somebody says that about you, you are a good Presbyterian upbringing, mm -hmm. but your upbringing a good Presbyterian. It means you, you can be trusted 100%. You know, what you do in the dark is what you do in the light. Okay. There's no difference. There's no difference. Exactly. But today, yeah. the measure is different. Yeah. It is how rich you are that you get respect. So everybody wants to get rich. And I'm sorry, it, it's rather, it doesn't work out that way. Everybody, no matter how you get your money or your, your wealth, nobody, nobody questions it. Nobody questions what is questioned is, why are you poor? Mm -hmm. okay, so you, you decided to become a teacher? No, I didn't decide. I tell, uh, it, uh, cause life got decided for me, yes, to become a teacher. And I'm glad I became one. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I became a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad the teaching led me to art. Mm -hmm. And I'm enjoying doing art, my art. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that at this age I associate with other young artists who mm -hmm. are also taking the same path. Mm -hmm. And they need encouragement, they need support. And I do give what I can, support, encouragement, and all that, yes. So for three decades, you taught as a lecturer? Yes, for, three, for 30 years 30 I was. Years. For 30 years I was a lecturer mm -hmm. at the Kumas. Uh, it was of Science and Technology. Uh, at the USA, KNU, nice KNUSA, KNUSA. yes, now KNUSA. Yeah. And um, I have, most of my colleagues now I work with are my students, really, uh, which are taught, which are working like me. Yeah. Uh, they are making it big, so I'm very proud of it. I'm very glad about that. Mm. Let's look at some of your international exhibitions. Uh, do you remember your first art piece that you sold out on commercial basis? Mm. You can remember. When I was at Tech, the British Council arranged a scholarship for me. The British Council rep in Kumase, a lady again, amazing, she arranged for me to exhibit in London. And for me, that was a big break because I had not exhibited outside before. Mm. And I didn't got that exposure okay. to be exposed to the British community. London, it was a big thing. And I, they exhibited my work at the Africa Center okay. uh, in, Lond in London. And uh, after that, things continued. Um, the, Commonwealth Institute then invited me to exhibit mm. again the following year. And after that exhibition, the October Gallery, where mm. UK. now they sell my work on a permanent basis, they also saw my work. And they said, oh, we, can we represent you? And I said, oh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> so that is how. So you see, one thing leads to the other. But the first show that I sold, a small, small work in London was through the British Council exhibition at the Africa Center mm. in London. So whilst lecturing, uh, you were also uh, working. working as a commercial artist. Uh, How did you I combine say, it? No, 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 no. I wasn't going to say commercial. I don't use the word commercial. But you, 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 you I, sell I, your I, art Yes, pieces. when people, when you come there and you want to work, I'll sell it to you, but that, <laughs> that's not my work. I was, uh, I, I, I was painting, yes. Mm. And they brought ambassadors and people who were leaving the country Whilst to, to Kumase. Yes, at Tech. They brought them to Tech. That was why I thought an art gallery is urgent. It's, mm. it's needed. It's, it, must be, it must come. 
and at tech, I was the only known artist. So government will approach me that would you, take, would you put together an exhibition to take to Germany for us? And then I'll do that. You know, I did that twice for Germany. I've done it for the Netherlands. I've done it for Denmark recently, since we came here. And every time there's a catalog. But I, I have to accompany the work. If the work is going to uh, Denmark, for example, I have to accompany the work. Somebody has to accompany the work anyway. So yes, by that, uh, I had the opportunity, unfortunately or fortunately, um, one big one we did was I was sent to Britain when Ghana was changing its stand. Uh, you know, in, in the Commonwealth, they have the Commonwealth Institute, where they have all the Commonwealth countries, exhibiting room. In Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, everybody has a, a room like this, exhibiting Ghana. So I was asked to go to London to change our exhibition, make it look proper, good, <laughs> anyway. It's something. <laughs> so I was saying, it's an, it was I'm an, amazed. <laughs> it was a good thing. It's an, a good opportunity. So I went to Britain. I worked with the um, planners and we uh, designed the place and what must be shown here, what must be shown here, and that kind of thing. So we were projecting Ghana, you know. So yes, I've been put on that kind of uh, assignment. Platforms. And I, for that matter, I traveled a bit. Mm. Uh, I've had the opportunity to travel. When do you think of an exhibition outside? That must be Ghana. And recently I got a letter from where? Somebody from, I thought I, I wasn't too happy about it. The other person said, would you uh, please send some works to be given as gifts? Yes, it was from Japan, I think. As gifts uh, for uh, people like that. And I thought, uh, what does he man think? They think I... <laughs> I <laughs> but um, that's, uh, it's all experience. It's mm. all past, yes. Okay. Let's take another break and then we'll come yes, back to okay. you. Yes, okay. You're still watching Legends of Our Time on GBC24. We'll take a quick break and when we come back, we'll continue that interview with Professor Abladi. Hello again. The program is Legends of Our Time on GBC 24. This is the platform where we talk to people who are making society better for you and I. My guest today is Professor Abladi Glava. He is an artist. Welcome back, Prof, from the Thank Greek. You. Thank you. You know, we are wrapping up now. Yes. You, you, you told us a bit about the Gold Coast era, the yes. fact that you know people were truthful, honest, and all that. Mm. Let's compare it to Ghana today. What has happened currently? What will be your comment? Uh, we 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 living our uh, real origins and following other hip things, and it's changing the way we perceive the things that are happening in our society is um, come out of the present upbringing and the exposure that we, uh, we, we receive uh, things wrong things that are being sold to us as the right things mm -hmm. and take the recent recent uh, thing that is come everybody is coming the, the homosexuality thing come over. I don't understand it at all uh, and I don't want to touch on it now here because um, it, it, it seems people are selling us everything and we are buying it like crazy. It's unfortunate. No, no doubt you have our school children cheating in school, the exams. People, people, just to make it. Should I, we haven't got enough time, but I'll tell you a story. Uh, some Please years, do, do. My brother returned from the US, my elder brother, and he had a beautiful Mercedes Benz with a, 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 a TV, a small TV on top. I was in a tech, and he came, brought the car to Kumasi to sell because they know Kumasi people, they like uh, nice things. <laughs> now, we went to a house that has called us, to, they want to look at the car. Uh, I was in the car, my brother has gone to the house, mm. and these two boys, about seven or eight year old boys, they were passing. 
um, they looked into the car and said, hey, TV room. My uncle said, no, TV name. Mm -hmm. Hey, TV room. Sure, sure, TV room. And then the driver said, no, TV name. And then the, the two came together, they saw the TV. They said, yeah, TV room. Why are you wait? Now why are you a girl? Why are you Hey! <laughs> now these are seven six, years. six, seven year old girl. I will put their age at six, seven. Now, if a child at that age can think that, you get have this. Such a car. If you get this kind of car and you get your a girl. Woman. And no, yeah, no, no. Asa? Yes. <laughs> now, this is a true experience. I saw, I heard it in my own. And I've told a lot of people about this story. And it gives a good, a good perception, a good idea of where we are going. Look, the children now He's growing young. up. Mm. A yes. child growing up today, mm. all he wants. It's a car. And a woman. And a woman. It's no finished. Work. No work. You don't have to work. Why do you bother? Why do you maybe you can get the money? So there will be robbery. There will be thieving. Mm. They will snatch your bags. They will do anything to get that kind of money. So, so Paul, what can we do as a people to come out of this problem? I think there, there is the institution called the, uh, education. Mm. I don't know this. I'm not but selling the... all educated. No, no. I'm not selling the... Presbyterian education, Christian education, upbringing. Uh, you know, education is not just reading and writing. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are doing a lot of it. They are doing a lot of it. And I was in a university in uh, Ohio State, Ohio State University, when I was studying for my PhD. And I tell you, and I tell my classmates there, now, no girl can go to the library in the evening. Mm -hmm. No girl goes there. Mm -hmm. Because you will be raped in the, garden, in the library. You can, so I tell my friends, ah, hmm. hey, it could happen in Ghana. A thing like that will not happen in Ghana. But boys go there just to trap girls, to rape them in the library. It's crazy. Crazy. But that's what we are selling here. That's what so we what are buying. We do? What should we do we to do, come I do, out of we, this Yes, problem. exactly. Let's get uh, our educational system geared towards heart education, human education. Not reading and writing and degrees, no. Let's get education that will give us a moral uprightness. Mm. Moral uprightness, you know? And that's what, what some of us were giving. And it, I think, I believe, I'm not selling Christian education, but that I believe that Christian education, where people were in charge and making that you grow up like a human being, not like a robot. Today, they are all dancing like uh, crazy. The children, you meet a six-year-old, but when you start dancing, you'll be amazed. You'll be dancing like Jackson. So, Prof, finally, yes. finally, before yes. we go, how would you want to be remembered years to come? Oh. Many, many years to come. Well, I, as an artist, if I'm remembered as an artist uh, who contributed uh, to the society, I'll be pretty happy. I would, I'll, I'll be happy in my grave. <laughs> I'll be very happy in my grave. As an artist, uh, I, I must have, uh, I met some artists that I know, I still remember them, they are Sakakwe and the rest, people, people have done a great thing, and we are continuing the journey. So yes, I, if I'm remembered as an artist, I'll be too happy, I'll be very happy. But I'll give the opportunity to also advise our youth. To advise? Our youth. The youth? Yes. Oh, it's not the youth that might be advised, it is the adults who bring up that youth. <laughs> <laughs> it is the, so what will you look, tell them? There are too many things happening. Too many things that are happening. For example, no, you look at our streets, the young people in the streets. Now these are going to grow up. They become adults. Mm -hmm. Where do they go? They, this, it's, it's, not, it's not the children. It's not them. It's us. People actually are raising their children in the street. People have, are standing sitting there under their shade and they send the children to the streets to come and beg. Mm -hmm. You know, the things that, and we are, the nation is sitting. You know, we are sitting on a keg, a keg of gunpowder. It can blow any day. Sure. These people are going to be thieves. It's not their fault, is it? No. No, it's not their fault. We raise them. So we need to change the course of things. The, it's not just free education. Moral education, moral education, if it costs money. I'd rather send my children to moral education, not to free education. So please. We need, we, need to, we need to blame ourselves and raise children that will grow up and hold the heritage. Not people who would dance, break dance in the college or whatever. <laughs>
<laughs> Professor Abladi Glover, thank you so much. Thank I you. understand it's, why you're so it's charged it's, up. It's, 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 it's my pleasure. But I'm, then I'm, let me say, I mean, we you. are so proud of you. Truly, you are a legend. Thank you very and, uh, much. You forever be if you think so. Uh, you are, you are. That's why we are here. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. <laughs> anyway. Mm -hmm. That's how we end today's program, Legends of Our Time, on GBC 24. Our guest has been Professor Abladi Glover. He is an artist and uh, he's exhibited extensively all over the world. My name is Gifty AJ. Thank you so much for watching. we we'll come your way same time next week, God willing. Until then, bye for now.